<laughs> We've got some new questions moving along <laughs> from our viewers about coronavirus risks and Dr. Jen Ashton, of course, joining us with that. So the first question, and I've noticed these have been blocked off in a few public restrooms that yep. I've been in. Should we avoid air hand dryers in public places? So there's no official data on this. In other words, they haven't tested paper towels on these hair, these hand dryers head to head but there is the assumption that they can aerosolize particles and therefore spread them throughout the bathroom of coronavirus and other respiratory pathogens, of course. But remember also the assumption is that your hands are clean mm. when you're using them. So various public health agencies are saying, well, paper towels probably more hygienic, but if you don't have a choice, go ahead and use them. I think the key is wash your hands well. <laughs> yes. I love these questions. It's always something yeah. I hadn't thought about. Right? That's a good question. TJ? Yeah learning something from questions how about this one <laughs> next question I read that horseshoe crabs play a role in vaccine development how does that work this is such an interesting scientific <laughs> question you guys so horseshoe crabs actually have a, a chemical substance in them that is used to detect bacterial contamination in vaccines so pharmaceutical companies have to actually get this from horseshoe crab blood. Huh. They have to get about a half a million Atlantic horseshoe crabs every year. Wow. Conservationists are not happy about this because it is making a dent in a negative way in the horseshoe crab population. There is a chemical you know, substance that can be used, but in the US, we're not allowing that chemical substitute. So we are getting this substance from actual horseshoe crabs and it is to detect bacterial contamination in vaccines. Uh, and one fascinating, last, right? It is fascinating, and here's uh -huh. one. I'm sure a lot of people have this question. Is COVID-19 sexually transmitted? What a loaded question, right. TJ. We could have like an hour on this. No evidence that it's transmitted in semen. However, remember the basics, prolonged close contact. Right. So saliva, you know, obviously when you're having a sexual encounter, there is prolonged close contact. So it is not a low risk activity for COVID transmission. This was a great <laughs> Q&A from the Thank viewers you, today. All right, and you can submit more of these outstanding questions to Dr. Ashton on our Instagram at Dr. J. Ashton. Thank you as always. All right, thanks, Jeff. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.